So the first thing that I have been doing for the last two years that I always do is that I plan ahead for the semester. You know kids, when their final exams end, they just throw away their bags and they burn their books and then they're out and they're just free for the time being the next semester starts. That time is your winning key for achieving your grade. That is the time to cover all your lost concepts, to bolster all your weak areas and to look at the subjects that you are going to be taking for the next semester. My first tip is plan ahead for the semester. Look at the courses that you're going to take and talk about it with your supervisor or with your professor and discuss what kind of things you would be able to study in that course. The next thing that you can do is Google the course outline. Most of the course outlines are pre-designed by your education department. You can simply type course outline and enter your program and it is going to give you a consolidated curriculum of that specific degree and you can find your course in that. Even if you do not have that entire curriculum available you can always type course outline with the course name for example i have a virology course next semester and to be honest i completed virology in first semester since the outbreak of covid i was just so scared because my friend was working back then in the field and i was just scared that how would the virus affect him and all that so in hopes of getting to learn more about it i completed this course and now that i have officially been registered for a virology course i don't really have to study it again other than just revise so how did i do that how did i study virology without actually studying it in the university i did that on youtube this virology professor vincent Rattanello, he teaches virology every semester and if you search him on youtube you're going to find a course for last year i think he's the best teacher of virology there is so i studied from his course on youtube and now i have one less subject to worry about another thing that you can do is during this time period when you have a semester break plan on the paper or the presentation that you're going to give for the course for my biology course i will present on hiv during this time period when i had nothing to do on my hands other than working on my research i completed all of the presentations that i am supposed to give in the next semester so you Use this time to brainstorm to decide what's in the course and what you are particularly interested about. Before your semester starts, make sure that you have got the hang of the basics of all the courses that you are going to be studying for the semester. You don't want to go blank into the class because it helps you in two ways. Number one, it helps you build up an interest in the course. Number two, it makes you question the knowledge that you are receiving. It makes you interpret whatever you are studying in the classroom and be present in the classroom. When you study before going to class, you're going to be more attentive and you are going to be more in sync with your teacher on a certain topic than you would be if you just go blank without any knowledge of what you're going to learn that day. The second point is that you have to be attentive in class. Now this is something that I see a lot of students lack. People do not pay attention in class and then they struggle with covering the amount of course and preparing for exams. When the truth is that I have never gotten enough time to study after school. So what I do is that I study in the class and I'm more focused on what the teacher is trying to explain it to me. And at the same time, I'm jotting down concepts and I'm making my own notes. Once you are done with the lecture, go home, read the lecture, rewrite the notes in a manner that you do not have trouble revising if you open your notes a day before the exam. Once you do that, while making your notes, annotate your notes. Use bullets, use highlighters, make your notes easier to read, ask questions while jotting down concepts, ask why is something happening how is something happening and what if something doesn't happen the way it is happening for example i made uh, separate notebooks for separate courses and sometimes the courses continue over the semesters like biochem so i had just one entire register with all the concepts of biochem that i used to jot down in it so that it became this in gigantic compendium and if i have to revise any topic i would just open my book and not the lecture and not the textbook so your notes give you the advantage of actually understanding the concepts and figuring what and why something is important why something is not the third thing that i want to emphasize on is 
that you need to read. Without reading, you cannot hope to clear your concepts. And reading is so essential because it helps you build up your knowledge gaps and it also helps you to realize how far we are in a certain subject area and it allows you to scrutinize your weak spots or places where you have trouble understanding certain things. One of my teachers taught me to review material from review papers because our textbooks are mostly old. Our current technology is way too ahead than what is written in the textbook. So once you read research papers, you're actually reviewing material that is current, let's say within the last 10 years. And at the same time, you also know what is the current trend of that research or what is going on in that particular area of the subject. Make an effort, read about topics from different sources, read about news articles, read about review papers other than actual original researches because review papers have less amount of data and are focused on underlying concepts and it helps you build up a base. So for example, if I have to search on cancer, so I'm going to go to PubMed and I'm going to type in introduction to cancer or all about cancers and I'm going to select review papers that have been published in the last 10 years and let's say two papers on a single topic help you a lot. Last semester my teacher taught us completely from papers and all the lectures that she designed were from review papers and it helped us a lot not only because it covered the entire subject matter very comprehensively but it also gave us an avenue to consider the future prospects of the subject area as well as understand the innovation that is being done and that can be achieved in that area. Once you are done reading the paper or the subject matter, try and explaining yourself to understand if you have actually gotten the concept of that write up. So what I usually do is that after I'm done reading a text, I re-explain it to myself and somehow it sounds like this when I'm studying about cancer. Two of the fundamental areas that one should have a complete grasp of is cell death. And cell death could be of two types. It could be accidental cell death or it could be programmed cell death. So your accidental cell death could be due to a lot of factors and your programmed cell death is just a programming of the cell, but those two are very specific. So once I'm done reading about it, I'm going to explain it to myself and it could sound like this, that the cell can either be killed externally or it could be killed internally and if a cell dies according to a pre-planned death it's going to be apoptosis and if the cell dies due to any of the external factors it's going to be necrosis and your necrotic tissue appears late than the actual death of the cell mostly it is accompanied by inflammation while apoptosis does not induce inflammation and that's how I retrade all the concepts that I've read and I revise them. That's just it. There are certain courses that are more applied in their nature. For example, if you talk about biotechnology or if you talk about a certain niche in biotechnology, these courses are applied fundamentals of a certain area. And so you need to understand how they are being used in that certain domain. And for that, it is always, always helpful to get in touch with people that are actually working on those areas or have an experience of those areas you can easily do this by using Twitter Twitter is the holy grail for reaching out to scientists the best part is that you don't have to take an appointment and if your question is logical they would love to talk to you about their research or the area that they belong to it is just so insightful to understand uh, and see how your current topic of study has an application whether it's in academia or industry the fourth thing that I would like you to focus on is your professor 